In this topic, we're going to look at energy and respiration. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is energy? Why do living organisms need energy? And what's the difference between endothermic and exothermic reactions? And then what is activation energy? All living organisms require energy. So where does this energy initially come from? Well, as you can guess, it comes from the sun. So plants use solar energy in a process called photosynthesis, and they convert it into chemical energy. Both plants and animals then break down these organic molecules to make something called ATP. And ATP is used as the energy source to carry out processes. So as you can probably remember, heterotrophs don't make their own energy. They need to feed on something else to get energy. Whilst autotrophs, for example, plants, get their energy from the sun. So what is energy? You should remember these facts from IGCSE. Energy comes in a variety of different forms, for example, electrical, potential, chemical. It's changed from one form to another, and it cannot be created or destroyed. And then the unit of energy is joule. So why do organisms need energy? So without some input energy, natural processes tend to break down into randomness and disorder. So if you imagine a building left alone, what's going to happen to it? It's soon going to become derelict. So the tiles will fall off the roof, the water will penetrate, fungi will rot the woodwork. If energy is continuously put into maintaining the building, then the property remains in an ordered state. So living organisms are highly ordered systems that require constant input of energy to prevent them from becoming disordered. So energy is required to do work. And here are some examples that you need to know. Energy is required for anabolic reactions, active transport, movement, maintenance, repair and division of cells, maintenance of body temperature, and production of substances. Let's have a look at these in a little bit more detail. Anabolic reactions. This is when simple substances are built into complex substances. For example, amino acids are built into polypeptides, monosaccharides into polysaccharides, nucleotides synthesized into DNA and RNA. Active transport. ATP provides the energy to move molecules or ions against their concentration gradient. For example, the sodium potassium pump. Energy is needed for the protein which acts as the pump to pump sodium out of the cell and potassium back into the cell. This is important in the transmission of electrical impulses and nerves. Movement. ATP provides energy for the movement of cilia, flagella, and then something called cytoplasmic streaming which is when the cytosol, the liquid component of the cytoplasm, and organelles move around large fungal and plant cells. And there's also needed in muscle contraction. Let's have a look at muscle contraction in a little bit more detail. So you know that muscles are made up of muscle fibers. And then inside these, you've got bundles of myofibrils. And then if you look inside a myofibril, it's made up of tiny myofilaments. Now these myofilaments can be um, or comprise actin and myosin. The actin and myosin slide over each other and this produces contraction of the muscles. So if you were to zoom into the filaments, the actin and myosin, you would see the actin is much thinner than the myosin. So you'd notice that the actin is made up of helical protein strands twisted together and the myosin is like a rod and it's got these little globular heads that act as ATPase. This is where these little heads attach to the actin and when they bend they cause the actin and myosin to move over each other causing contraction. So ATP is involved in this process, and when ATP is hydrolyzed, the myosin head detaches from the actin filament. So contraction is when the little myosin head attaches to the actin, it bends and it moves, 
the actin and myosin filaments over each other. And then maintenance, repair and division of cells. ATP is required for this. Maintenance of body temperature in mammals and birds. Well, as you know, mammals and birds are endothermic. So they need energy to replace that which is lost to the environment as heat. Energy is required in the production of substances, for example, enzymes and hormones. ATP is needed to form the little vesicles that are necessary for these cell products. Let's have a look at energy and metabolism. So how are these two linked? All reactions that take place within organisms are collectively known as metabolism. You've got two types. You've got anabolism, which is the build-up of larger complex substances from smaller ones. This requires energy. Then you've got catabolism, which is the breakdown of complex molecules into simple ones, and this releases energy. So when one form of energy is converted into another, for example, when you've got electrical energy being converted into light energy, some energy is lost as heat. Energy that is still available to do the work is called free energy. So if the products of a reaction contain more energy than the reactants, and free energy must be supplied to make the reaction happen, we call this an endothermic reaction. So have a look here. It's like you need to apply heat to ice to melt it. So notice how the products have got more energy than the reactant. So you need to apply energy. If the reactions have products that have got less energy than the reactants, and energy is released in the reaction, we say that it's an exothermic reaction. For example, striking a match. So notice the difference in the graphs between endothermic and exothermic. Endothermic requires energy. Exothermic gives out energy. Now before any chemical reaction can proceed, it must be activated. The energy required is called activation energy. So, for example, you've got catalysts. Catalysts lower this activation energy. Looking at this graph, catalysts lower this activation energy and enable a reaction to take place more rapidly and usually at lower temperatures. So, what have we learned in this lesson? We've looked at the different uh, reactions or processes that require energy, for example, anabolic reactions, active transport, movement, maintenance, repair, and division of cells, maintenance of body temperature, and the production of substances. We looked at how energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it's changed from one form to another. Endothermic reactions require energy. Exothermic reactions give out energy. And activation energy is required for a reaction to occur. And that concludes our lesson, the end.